But if you program yourself to be grateful for the things that you have and why you have them, then you just become, you look at those things different. You look at those things more than you would look at the things that you don't have. So when you stack all those things you're grateful for, like let's say five to 10 things and why you're grateful, then that just kind of takes momentum for your day and it just naturally you gravitate towards things that you're that you're happy that you have already instead of oh i don't have this i don't have that welcome to men of abundance the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community living a life of integrity honor and the abundance mentality prepare to pay it forward with your host former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur wally carmichael What is going on, all of you amazing abundant leaders out there? I am Wally Carmichael, your founder and host of the Men of Abundance podcast, the pay it forward community, proving to you that you can, in fact, live a life of abundance in family, faith, finances, and fitness. In fact, you have an obligation to do so. And look, when I say stuff like that, I'm not trying to put any pressure on you or anything like that. It's just that you have, I feel that you have an obligation to live your life of abundance and continue to pay it forward to others with your time, treasure, or talents, or all the above. The fact of the matter is, the more resources you have, the more wisdom you have, the more knowledge you have, then you should be sharing that and paying it forward and sharing it with others. If anything, and this may sound kind of selfish, the fact of the matter is the highest level of happiness, and there's been many, many studies on this. I've got so many books over here just around the idea of happiness and measuring happiness and how do you measure happiness. There's a whole reason behind. I was used, look, I got those books and was looking for that, and that's for another story I might share later. But the fact of the matter is the highest level of happiness comes from giving, so if you truly want to be happy, then give. And the thing is that, like I've said it before, if you want better and stronger relationships, then you give more to the relationships you currently have. If you want more energy, then you give up some of your energy. You have to expel energy to gain energy. The more you work out, the stronger your body gets and the more energy you start to have. If you want more resources, then give of those resources. You want more time, give of your time. It's an amazing phenomenon that happens, but I'm here to tell you I'm living proof and many of the conversations here on Men of Abundance have proven to you time and time again that this is true. And this has never been more important than the time we are in right now with everything we have going on with so much scarcity mindset. We need so much more abundance in our lives. We need the abundance mindset. So be abundant in your actions today. Pay it forward. Share men of abundance with others. Share good news with others because the good news doesn't get pumped out as much in the media and many people don't boast about themselves. Many people who are doing well and doing amazing things in their community don't share what they are doing. Let's lift them up. And that's what many of the people here on Men of Abundance are doing. They're paying it forward to their community. I'm reaching out to many of them and asking them to come onto the show to share their story and share how it is that they are paying it forward. And it is, in fact, making a huge difference. I know because I get the emails, I get the notifications, I get to read the ratings and reviews on iTunes and all the other podcast players, and it lifts me up every time I get a chance to hear that somebody was affected by one of these conversations. So be abundant in your actions today, pay it forward, share men of abundance with others, take a screenshot of your phone if you're listening to this on the phone, or take a picture of your computer if you're listening to it on the computer, post it to your favorite social media platform, hashtag men of abundance, hashtag abundance, hashtag MOA, and hashtag your favorite hashtag. <laughs> So our featured guest today has a very long bio that was sent to me, so I'm not going to read through the whole thing. Just know this, that we have a conversation here talking about putting other people on a pedestal and not being able to reach that pedestal because you've put them there. 
We also talk about what he's doing in the world of podcasting and why and what got him to that point. You know, we always talk about the kick in the gut moment. We get into that and then he shares what he's doing with the po- in the podcasting industry to help other podcasters get their voice through podcasting and other platforms. And in fact, we have quite a long conversation about TikTok of all things. That's going to interest you, or at least it should. So be sure to check out the show notes of this episode to read through our feature guest's bio because it is quite extensive and very impressive. So, Men of Abundance, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Lance Essiehouse. Lance, welcome to Men of Abundance, brother. Where are you at in the world? Hey, thanks, Molly. Thanks for having me. I'm over in the uh, west coast of Canada, Vancouver. Vancouver. I know quite a few folks out in Canada. Thanks to this whole podcasting bit and and coaching and everything. Actually, two of my coaches, two of my top coaches actually are in Canada. Um, uh, Mark Mawinney and uh, Carl Bryan. Both of those cats live out there in Canada. Uh, nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice place to be. Uh, for your listeners that don't know, it's it's similar to Seattle sort of weather-wise. You know, it's, it's Seattle's about three hours away, so that's kind of how I compare it for people that haven't been here. So same, and it, it is a beautiful place. So very grateful to be here. Very cool. Yeah, I've never been there. I've never been to Seattle either, but I do know of the of the uh, weather and kind of the landscape, if you will, of Seattle. So that paints a very good picture, man. I like to start out with an attitude of gratitude, brother. What do you have to be grateful for today, Lance? Well, grateful for life in general. To grateful to be able to wake up and have two legs, two arms, a brain. Um, it's it's funny that you ask that question because I do my gratitude journal every day. So, um, yeah, man, grateful to be alive in this experience of life, be able to create and, you know, do all the amazing things and connect with people like yourself. Well, listen, guys, you just heard it. I'm not the only crazy mofo out there that does a gratitude journal. Uh, I know why I do it. Lance, what's it done for you uh, and how long have you been doing that? Uh, I, yeah, I didn't know why I started to do it in the first place. I was, I kind of thought it was a dumb idea back in the day. Um, mm-hmm. I've been doing it. I, I, I've been doing it for about since about 2017, beginning of tw- or mid somewhere in 2017. I started doing it, and um, it just it really it really helped me kind of get perspective on what what I have in my life and and. A lot of times I focused on what I didn't have and what wasn't going right. Mm. And I find that's a programming that we create in our own head. So it's important to, in the morning, to start, because it's easy to think one way or the other, right? But if you program yourself to be grateful for the things that you have and why you have them, then you just become, you look at those things different. You look at those things more than you would look at the things that you don't have. So when you stack all those things you're grateful for, like let's say five to ten things and why you're grateful, then that just kind of takes momentum for your day and it just naturally you gravitate towards things that you're that you're happy that you have already instead of, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that. You know? So yeah. it's just a programming that allows you to um, shift your perspective. And it's really been useful for me and it's really helped me and I encourage a lot of people to to do it because um, in a world of people like lacking it, uh, it can really shift your perspective, and really put you on the right track. Yeah, it's extremely powerful. And it's been all of that and, and more in my life as well. I've been doing it for quite a while. I admittedly don't journal every single day. But every single day I go through something that I'm grateful for, at least in my head, uh, when I'm sitting down in my quiet moment time, which I actually do a couple times a day. I really enjoy that time. But I'm fortunate to have that time as well. And that's another thing I'm super grateful for. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's it's almost like just just to have that practice, just just to be able to say, you know, have those a a mindful practice like that that you're focused on for a certain period of time is really good. And yeah, I mean, I would encourage anybody listening, you know, don't beat yourself up if you don't do it one day, but try and get in a rhythm of at least not taking a zero, at least try and think of one or two things to start and yeah it can be really powerful and um once you start to get momentum you start to see things kind of change 
Yeah, exactly. And one more point to that is, guys, this isn't one of those things that you do once or twice and you're like, well, that was dumb. I didn't get anything out of it. Uh, it's it's just like your diet. It's just like going to the gym. It's just like anything else. It's continued, you know, spaced repetition. It's continued working through it and continue doing it. The mind has to be reprogrammed. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in a second. In some cases, it does. If you have a significant emotional event, then that's going to change your thought process like real quick. <laughs> yeah. But aside from that, it takes work, man. So that's why we do this. Yeah. It's, um, and especially we've been conditioned in, in certain ways our whole lives. So, you know, it takes a long time to condition our, our minds. And we're, especially from like zero till 10, we picked up a lot of different beliefs, a lot of different things from our, our we, the, the narrative we tell ourselves, from the people we connect with. So it takes time. It's not a one and done thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a, I wouldn't say to people to beat themselves up over it, but I would say look at uh, and be honest with yourself and understand that if you want things to change, you're going to have to be consistent with it for a while. Right. And it's a it's a work in progress. You can't just do it and stop. You have to keep doing it for to keep evolving and which will help you evolve as well. Yeah, for sure. So, brother, before we got started here, I talked a little bit about you from your bio and some other stuff that I found about you because I stalk a lot of people online before I uh, <laughs> have a conversation with them. Uh, but all of that's professional stuff, man. Here on Men of Abundance, we like to get to know the man behind the abundance, get a little bit more personal. So if you would. How would you describe yourself? Um, well, I've, I've gone through a lot of different changes in the last while. But now I would say that I'm, I would say I'm on a mission to inspire people through human connection. So, you know, I have a podcast of myself called the University of Adversity where I interview people who have gone through similar stories to myself or different and gone on to become successful in their lives. So – I like to change the perspective on adversity and allow people to understand that it is their friend and not their enemy. And so what that, I would say that has in the last 10 months, we've done over 100 episodes, that's really shaped the direction of who I am now. Um, so I, I love to inspire people. And yeah, and, and I do that through the human connection and sharing stories. So um if you had asked me, you know, a year ago, I would have said something different. But you ask me now, so that's 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 kind of what came to my head right now. Yeah, and that's what we have a lot in common. Uh, first off, I I never could really say that I was that I struggled with drugs and alcohol. It's something that I partook in um, before joining the military and many years ago and one of the reasons why I joined the military because I, I saw I was going down a path that I just didn't want to go down and I did some pretty hard stuff uh, growing up it was just my environment I'm fortunate to be somebody who did not get addicted to even the hard stuff uh, it was just recreational stuff that I did but then at the same time the other part that we have a, a, a really connected with you was that and what you just said was through the process of your podcast, having all of those conversations, connecting other people. I've been doing this show for three and a half years, and I grow from every single conversation. And I grow even more when I edit the episode, and then I grow even more when I go listen to the final product, <laughs> even listening to the same conversation. So yeah. that's why I'm just so inspired by sharing all of these conversations, and I know uh, that you are getting so much out of, especially the ones about adversity, which we'll get into yours here in just a minute. So what else, how specifically do you feel that you've grown as a result of having those conversations and making those connections? It's a great question. And it's something that I have really, I've really noticed and I've talked about a few times is that I didn't realize signing up for a podcast, what it would do for me, right? I had done it initially to help um, build my influence for my business potentially. But what I really didn't understand was what it was going to do for me personally. And you're right, every single conversation has been a lesson. And not only from the conversation itself, but getting through the self-doubt or the lack of confidence. You know, some people are highly educated and make a lot more money than I do, and I'm having conversations with them. But that is a belief, right? 
We tell ourselves that we're not good enough sometimes. We tell ourselves that we're not that we're not capable. And in the beginning, I had nothing to lose, so I was just like, whatever, I don't care. If I mess up, <laughs> I don't care. So I kind of built that momentum. But now, sometimes it comes back because I'm like, okay, I've created this thing, and now I'm like, I, it's more professional. I gotta kind of care a little bit more. It's kind of funny how it's evolved, but now, for it, it's actually been like therapy sessions for me. Like I talk to these people, mm-hmm. and I get inspired, and my vibration lifts every time. Like it's crazy, and I'll do four interviews in a day sometimes, and by the end of it, I'm just flying. I'm just flying. My energy is just through the roof. How could it not be, right? You know, how, how could your energy not be elevated from these people? And I find the ability to connect and to find that goal and to find that lesson and to be able to allow them to shine makes me feel good. So there's so many factors in podcasting that is so important, not only for positioning yourself as an authority in your business and, and building trust with your audience, but as a host, it's like your own, you get to like, it's like the cheat code. You get to have these conversations with people that you normally wouldn't for an hour and it's in you know for them to be able to share some of their vulnerabilities and to be able to get the lessons it's it's really really been um, probably the most impactful thing that I've had in my life to date as far as making that choice to do a podcast it's it's been it's been incredible so I encourage your listeners out there anyone listening like if you have the opportunity I, I would take it because, you know, it, it can really, really do a lot for your self-confidence and just develop you as a human being. Yeah, absolutely. Very well said, man. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the the opportunity. One, like you said, I have had the opportunity to talk with people. I One, I would have never gotten connected with you had it not been for this podcast and others that I've had on the show in, in the past. And I've had conversations with people. I've never wanted to be really starstruck, but I've had conversations with people that I would not imagine that I would have been able to have a conversation with. And the coolest thing about it was it gave me the confidence to either I I was connected with a lot of people through other connections like you do, or it was somebody that I literally just, just reached out to and said, Hey, I dig what you're doing. I want to have a conversation with you on men of abundance. And to my surprise, the first time I did that, let's see, the first time was um, Jay Papazan, the co-author of the one thing with Gary Keller. I hit Uh him up on Twitter and he's like, what? Men of Abundance? Absolutely. Let's do it, man. And then that led to so many other amazing opportunities, not just commun- conversations, but opportunities that I would have never had had I not had that conversation with Jay. So it's just amazing. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And I've, I've used Instagram to, to leverage a lot of different people as well. And yeah, and, and I I love your name of your show, Man of Abundance. It's awesome. And it's kind of, you know, it's just people, University of Adversity, people seem to like the name, which is I'm grateful for as well, is that that kind of rings a bell for people. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I like that, you know? And it's amazing when you, what, exactly, you connect with these people and you're like, what? I would have never talked to them, right? And, but, you know, and, and it builds confidence too, right? How does it, it must have helped your confidence immensely as well. Well, the other thing it does for me too, and th- I didn't expect this, but as I have more conversations with people who some put up on a pedestal and some that I've even put up on a pedestal, I'm thinking that guy's unreachable. I could not imagine, you know, being at the level of somebody like um, – Goodness, I'm going to draw a blank on his name right now. But he helped a 1-800-GOT-JUNK basically go from $2 million business. They were stuck to $136 million business as the COO. And and I'm like, I'm not at that guy's level at all. Not even sure I want to be at that guy's level. But what I learned is he's got issues just like everybody else. Every other – I've had 280-some-odd conversations. Everyone has – issues you know you always say we all put our pants on the same way we all take a crap we all do this we all have issues and many of us have imposter syndrome even guys at that level it's ridiculous so it just gives me the confidence to say i can have a conversation with anybody and i can do whatever the heck i want to do you know obviously i'm not gonna go play in the nba or something let's be realistic about it but you know the point is is it gives me the confidence to really move forward with what i want to do yeah, you see the human side to people and you realize everybody is human. Everyone's the same. Just certain people are ahead on the journey. But then some people have got to that spot and they're, they, 
there that spot wasn't even what they wanted what they thought mm. that spot was to you know pro athletes especially i've talked to a few and it's always the same conversation yeah it's great but like it wasn't as great as it, it wasn't that fulfilling it's like you get the money you make it all on your but then it's it's a grueling schedule and you know we don't see the side of we only see the flashiness and oh it would be so great to be there and all of them say the same thing yeah it's amazing don't get me wrong but they go you know there's also a side to it that we don't see and i love hearing that human side to these successful people that understand that you know what like i was just like you it was just i'm now i was grinding and now i'm here and you know we we do like to put people on the pedestal and I don't think that's a good idea. It's natural, but I love kind of getting lifting them off that pedestal because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we're all humans, and we only give them that if, if we allow that to happen, right? Like mm -hmm. it's 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 a, it's a really interesting game when it comes to interviewing people yeah. because yeah. like they you know they're they're full aware that they're human and and you know they they actually just enjoy not being treated like that sometimes you know like yeah. it's it's uh it's pretty interesting stuff. It is. A lot of them really do not want to be in that limelight. And I could name several at this point. It's just there are so many people. It's almost like, you know, Forrest Gump running down the road for no apparent reason and everybody starts following him. And he's like, what the hell are you following me for? I'm just yeah. here doing my thing, man. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, it exactly right. That's And the thing is, guys, as long as you put somebody on a pedestal, you are never going to be able to reach that level. You're never going to be equal or surpass that individual. If that's your goal to stay where you're at, fine, that's great. But I'm guessing that you're listening to this conversation and listening to Men of Abundance because you want to go to the next, you want to take your life, your relationships, your health, your business, whatever, to the next level. And as long as you have your mentor, your coaches or, or whoever on a pedestal, um, then you're just not going to reach that level. It's just not going to happen. So, man, you, yeah. you know, you got university adversity. I personally absolutely love that. And that it's takes cool. us into our kick in the gut moment. So yeah. it's time for you to share your adversity and share with us that kick in the gut moment that took you to your knees and what you learned from that. Yeah, it was, um, it was a combination of things. Um, you know, I had a bit of I was working in bars, had a bit of a drinking problem, a little bit, a lot of fun, but a lot of down, a lot of really low moments. And, you know, from a, the period from, a, let's say, 2015 until 2017, there was some, well, between 2015 and 2018, there was some real tough times. So, you know, we lost my younger brother uh, to suicide when I was in Australia, uh, which was really, which was really a tough moment. And I kind of went on a downhill spiral after that. There's a lot of things weird with my family, step families, you know, all that kind of crap that really emotionally drained me for years. So I was kind of pulled away from my younger brother. We weren't very close, but even that even made it worse when we lost him because I was meaning to connect with him. So so I was already, you know, pretty living a pretty toxic life. So that kind of took me on a, a spin for a while. And then I decided you know, to give it up in 2017 for a while, but then we lost my dad that year. So within a very short period of time, I lost them both. And, you know, I, th that was kind of the thing that, that allowed me to really decide to, to make a pivot and shift and, and get into something that was more meaningful. Um, and, you know, the, the, the podcast itself was inspired by those events, you know, University of Adversity, I had gone through a lot of adversity in my life, a lot of challenges, a lot of shit. And you know, and I'm grateful for it. I'm not gonna sit here and complain and play the victim. It happened for a reason and I'm owning it and I'm grateful for it because I wouldn't be who I am without it. But that was the kick in the gut, you know, losing losing family members, feeling at a low moment, and I wanted to turn a negative into a positive. So that was where I decided, huh, okay, what if I interviewed other people? and share their stories. So that's kind of how, that's kind of the evolution of all of this. So it was a combination of uh, a ref, a, a left hook, uh, a gut shot, and then a right hook, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it, 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 it's been a pretty interesting journey, but um, I'm grateful for everything I've learned from it. So 
Yeah, you know, and I, I love listen to the language, guys. This is what we're talking about, and I'll I'll make this slip up once in a while. You know, I'll, I'll say to myself, you know, why did that happen to me, or you know, that stuff happened to me back in the past. But it's not what happened to us; it's what happened for us. And that is it. That simple little terminology right there, and that's what he said when that stuff happened for me. You know, it, it's it's a completely different mindset than when it happened to me and making yourself the victim. Yeah. Uh, when you're a victim, when you when you release yourself from being a victim, that's where you f- start finding true freedom in your life, but through your mindset and through your through your terminology, through the words, through the story that you're telling yourself, because it's just that it's just a story. So let's get into that. What you know? What are the conversations? What is the goal for? You know, you said initially you wanted to start the podcast to kind of start broadcasting your business or getting yourself out there a little bit more. How, has that worked at all? And has that, that goal been met or did it completely get derailed and take another course? Uh, yeah. Another great question. Um, <laughs> I, um, it kind of took on its own thing. So I, have since doing the podcast, I've kind of shifted my perspective in my, my business itself. So I've kind of gone all in with the podcast instead of, you know, I was doing direct sales and, and marketing online and Facebook ads and all that, and that was all great. And you know, I may still introduce that later, but I just found there was I was competing with a lot of people, and I thought, oh, okay, I need this isn't this isn't really doing it for me like I wanted to. So, what I decided to do was kind of go all in with podcasting. So, build my method, prove the method, and basically provide people. Um, you know, podcasting as well. So we do done for you podcast systems. We provide, we manage them. We do all that stuff. And if you, people have had podcasts and they don't want to do it, don't want the work, we take it over. So um, it's I I just realized the power that podcasting has done for me at building relationships, building authority, building trust. And I want to give that to people, and I don't want them to not do it because of all the work and the editing and the annoying things. So it just aligned for me. Um, it's been a challenge. Don't get me wrong. It's it's been it's never easy, especially when you have people remotely and you're you're managing people. And there's been a lot of a lot of fun times figuring this out. But it's I I believe the vision of podcasting is powerful, and we're only just scratching the surface. With you know when you look at this, people go, oh, there's lots of podcasts. And it's like, well, not really. When you think about how many YouTube channels there are, there's not even a million podcasts. And there's like 500 million YouTube channels, right? So point. I look at that and, and yeah, that was from uh, Pat Flynn said that a couple weeks ago and I was like, oh, boom, that's amazing. And But that's the thing. And for me, I love podcasting so much and I love these conversations. I love having, I love hosting mine. I love being on them. I'm like, that. why would I not want to do this? Why would I not want to, you know, go all in with this? So that's how it's kind of happened, man. It's, it's I didn't mean, I didn't think that was what was going to happen, but that's kind of what I have allowed the universe to sort of. Um, you know, give me as an opportunity and I've kind of ran with it and, and, and it hasn't been easy. No, but that's, that's kind of the direction that I've, uh, I've decided to go on. Well, good for you, man. That's awesome. And to the point of all the podcasts out there, the other thing is, is just like many of the, the YouTube channels, if you go out and look at all the different podcasts out there, and I know I've, I've been through the evolution over the last three and three or years about three and a half years or so you know started out a hundred thousand three hundred thousand so on six hundred thousand but if you look at the reality of it all there's really not that many that are sustaining that are three years old for instance you know there's some that have 10 episodes and it's a series and that's it you know and there's youtube channels out there too that come and go hell i've got probably five or six youtube channels that i've started and you know, <laughs> left yeah. to the side. They're still out there, but you know, like we were talking about pre-show, people will contact me and they'll they'll reference something that I'm like, where the heck did you get that from? Yeah, uh, you know, that's been like five, ten years ago. Yeah, and I felt that's the issue with a lot of people, right? And that shouldn't be the reason you don't do it, right? Yeah, like it's well, uh, the, yeah, exactly. The reason why, and to get into that a little bit, and I would be interested in why you found that that's been the reason. But for me, I personally know that it's a lot of work. It's a lot. I started out this show three days a week, and I still had a full time job at the time. And I was like, hell no! I'm John Lee Dumas was my mentor doing seven days a week, and he started out with that. But he also had a mentor. He had money to throw at it, and you know a lot of other 
things, not making excuses. I'm just saying I wasn't down with doing three a week, let alone seven. So I broke it down to one and now I'm back to two. Plus I have two podcasts now. (laughs) So, you know, plus a YouTube channel or two and, you know, Facebook groups I manage and my own business. So I stay pretty busy and still get a chance to go to Disney and Universal with my kids. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you're you're kind of you started in a in a good time, and I feel like right now people are thinking, oh, it's too saturated. And it's just not the case. Wait for five, ten years, then they're gonna go, oh wow, okay. The, and I think the world is gonna change as well. I think what we know as podcasting now will probably evolve into different things, and that's okay. But that's like anything in life, right? It's not linear. It's like you got to be willing. You have your goal, and you got to be willing to kind of pivot and go. You know, yeah. You know, wait. When you got to go up, you're gonna go down, and, and and zig when you want to zag, right? And that's kind of I think the game of all this is that the general idea is going to be there. Like the people, independent businesses, people getting out their message. I think that's always gonna be there. But who, how it'll be done? I mean, who knows? There'll be probably be. You know, virtual reality. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know, but, <laughs> but I, I love getting, I love the idea of all of this and the evolution of where it's going, and, and allowing people to be able to, to share who they are. You know, and yeah. just like YouTube, YouTube's great. I mean, it's, it, but yeah, I know it's, it's, it's hard to stay consistent in a world where we get distracted with so many different things. You, there's a new app coming out all the time. And then it's like, Oh man, like I got used to this one. Now it's TikTok. Now it's this, it's that it's, it's craziness. Right. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's all kind of part of the journey and, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how things change in the next few years. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to say it right here first on this show. It's going to be holograph cast of <laughs> yeah. some sort, right? It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I see that coming. There's no doubt in my mind. I see that coming pretty soon. Um, but yeah, absolutely. And here's the cool thing about this, guys. Rather it's audio or video, one of the things I recently heard on another podcast, and it, it completely hit home and I've been running with this, is um, your tone you know, so when when you're when you're writing like a blog, and most people can't write like very very well to where you can actually feel and hear the tone. But even then, when you're writing something, when when I'm reading something, I put a tone to it. I put my own tone to it, and it may not be the tone of the author. When you're doing audio and specifically video, where you can see spa- uh, facial expressions and body movement, then you are actually projecting your tone. You're owning your tone. You're not leaving it up for interpretation. So rather, you have your own podcast or your own YouTube channel or any other medium of that nature. Um, then I would suggest if you don't do that, then go get on other people's shows, uh, and that way your tone is is you own it. You're projecting your tone and you're making sure that your message is heard and evoking the emotion that you want it to evoke. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. 100%, man. Yeah, so who knows who knows where it's going to go next, but we're having fun with it at this point. Yeah, definitely. It's it's not going anywhere. It's just a matter of like how how uh it becomes more it's going to become more of a uh, part of everybody's business because at the end of the day, you got all these bells and whistles online, right? You got all these sales funnels, you got all this people, all this stuff. But at the end of the day, people, people buy from people they trust, right? And I mean, when you got 10 people selling the same thing, but you have one or two that you could get to know and follow and, and, and hear about how they talk, how they speak, what their values are. You can't hide when you're in a podcast, like you, you, you know what I mean. And if you're doing as many interviews as you've done, people get to know you, so they go, "Hmm, would I rather do business with this guy or this guy that's mysterious and he's got a nice sales funnel, but I don't know who the hell he is." They're gonna pick the guy that they feel that they can trust more, mm-hmm. and that is why podcasting is so powerful because it's and 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 I'm just saying this just from a, a you know a perspective of. If you break it down, like, I mean, the other end of the day, so many people are selling stuff out there. It's like, and you want to find out about the person behind it, right? I mean, that's the thing. And and I feel that podcasting is going to have a way bigger, way bigger um, impact on people at figuring out and deciphering through the noise and through all the, you know, through the clouds of, of all this stuff happening. I feel like yeah. you could, you could really get to know somebody. So 
at, the, at that level, I think it's going to grow. How we do it is probably going to change, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's really interesting that we're having this conversation specifically about podcasting and getting your message out there and selling your products and services through this medium, because I I recently have been connecting with a couple. I get a lot of uh, folks that come onto my show through uh, various types of podcast bookers. And these guys, you know, these guests are quite frankly paying these bookers quite a bit to get on each show. And I started talking to some of my guests and other folks that I know that have been using these type of agencies, which are, they're great. They're doing their job. They're getting them booked on some amazing shows. And, but their return on investment hasn't been what they thought it would be. And then I talked to some of the podcast bookers, some of the agencies, and they're like, yeah, some of our clients come back and say, you know, you're not doing your job, this, that, and the other, but they are. They're getting them on shows. The disconnect is this, and this is what I found, and this is being a marketing strategist uh, I've been working with these folks on, is rather you're in front of a stage, an actual uh, group of people of 200 people, which potentially is what you're doing when you're on each podcast episode, Uh, You're in front of hundreds of people around the world, rather you're in front of a live audience or on a podcast or whatever, radio, TV. If you don't have your message honed in and then you're not directing your, your, those potential clients, those prospects to the right um, website, squeeze page, whatever the case may be, then you're missing out. You, that's where the, that's where you're missing the mark because you're getting your message out there. You're just not directing them in the right place. So that's something that I've been working on and working with, with my own content, which has helped me great, just tremendously. So now I'm reaching out to try to help other people. And, you know, you mentioned, um, two things that I'm interested in is one Instagram. And I know a lot of people, I use Instagram as well. And I post some videos on there and some stuff like that. But video seems to be king. That's why TikTok has come out of like, I'm, I talked to people, I talked to a tattoo artist a couple weeks ago. And he's like, none of my effing people are on, on TikTok because they think it's for teens. Well, I pulled up a, a site. I pulled up one tattoo artist that's got several million followers i'm looking at right now you probably heard it while i opened it up um on tiktok there's a lawyer and is it's at the lawyer not plugging him i don't know the guy i just follow these different business owners but this lawyer on tiktok has 1.8 million followers and 226.8 million likes you think Uh, that guy's getting business from tiktok or not yeah 100 percent. yeah and uh, he's sharing actual content. He's doing some silly stuff on there too, just because the medium likes to see that. The audience likes to see that. But he's sharing quality content on there that yeah. helps people. And he's creating a connection with 1.8 million followers. And you can not follow the guy and still like. So he's got 26.8 million likes that people are liking his stuff and not follow, following him. Yeah, That's it's- huge. It's very organic right now. It's very easy to blow up there, which is which is good. And I've been thinking about spending more time on there as well. LinkedIn is good as well, mm-hmm. right? These are these LinkedIn is is very good as as well. TikTok's brand new. Well, it's not brand new, but it's been oh. And these are these are the best spots right now for organic reach. I actually mm-hmm. had Shay Robottom on my show, um, who's just killing it on LinkedIn. And video on LinkedIn is huge. But they're so different, but they're still really useful in in what they offer. You know, yeah. Facebook in 2012 was kind of like what what Instagram or what is, uh, LinkedIn is now. And there's not a lot of organic reach on Facebook. There's not a lot of organic reach like there was on Instagram. But that's why TikTok and and LinkedIn are are, are good because. You don't have to pay to play, so to speak, as much as you do on the other platforms. So, yeah, I, I definitely it's it's tough though because like, yeah, it may be for teens, but as Gary Vee says, like that's the next generation, right? Mm-hmm. So you need you need to think about that because people like I'm 36. I'm not sure how old you are, but like, I mean, this wasn't in our this wasn't in our DNA growing up. These apps and stuff. So it's been a real adjustment, you know. Yeah. Like, and you get used to one, and it's like, oh man. I don't want to learn another one, but I mean, and then these kids growing up now, it's like they don't know, they don't have a, a social media detox button. They don't know anything else. They only know that that was, that was ingrained into them, right? So it's a really interesting thing. So to them, learning these apps is really natural. 
And for us, it's like, oh, another one? Like, mm. it's like, <laughs> no, right? Like, it's, it's, exactly. Like, it's crazy. So we really need to think about, you know, if you're looking at a 20, 30 year plan of where you want to be, you got to think about the teens and like, where, the, mm. what are, what are they going to want, right? Because, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's all Facebook about how you do it and where you do it at. You got to tell yeah. your message different on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok. You got to tell it different in each one of those platforms. And you have to, you know, the whole thing is about entertainment and education. That's yeah. what the whole thing is about. And I created a kind of a, just a test um, profile on TikTok. And I used to watch TikTok before when it was musically. And it was just fun then. And then it changed. I stopped for a while and I came back and it was TikTok. I was like, what the hell is this? The app even changed on my phone. I was like, what's this app? And I, I, that's why I have my musically, you know, oh. like also silly videos. And then it changed over to TikTok. But anyway, I created this um, fake not a fake profile. I, I created this profile. It was a different name under abundance because I just did a rebranding. I did abundance and prosperity business mastery. I created one video. That one video within 24 hours had 38 likes and two comments. That's more than I've ever gotten on a Facebook video. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I mean, in that short period of time. Yeah. I mean, literally in a couple hours, it had likes and, and follows and, and I had a couple followers and stuff like that because of the, the you now I had to do with the hashtags. I followed Gary V's advice and put some certain hashtags in there and stuff like that. But the, it was just amazing. So I'm um, definitely something that I work with my business owners on if it's appropriate to get them on there. Uh, yeah. For various reasons. So anyhow, brother, we are at the point. We are way past the point. We've been talking and I love it um, yeah. where we're going to pay it forward. You ready to do that? Sure, man. Excellent. I'm interrupting this conversation just briefly because I want to share with you what the ultimate competitive advantage is. Now, I've asked this question in groups and not one person has gotten it right yet. So let's see if you get it right. But be honest with yourself because your integrity is on the line. Now, I will tell you, I have personally used this advantage for many years while I was in the military and even as a civilian and doing what I do now as a business and marketing strategist. In fact, when soldiers are on the battlefield and at war, this same exact competitive advantage is being used and it's in play, whether they know it or not. And this same advantage is used in sports, it's used in politics, it's used when you're debating with somebody, rather it's your relatives or somebody on Facebook for that matter, it's used in selling, and it's used in very high-level businesses. Well, those that are very successful anyway. Now, let me share with you a few responses that I normally get when I ask this in a group of people. Some people will say communication. Some people will say character, personal values, experience. And I can go on and on, but I want to get back to the conversation. So just slip in whatever it is that you're guessing at this point right now. And while those are important attributes to having some level of success, but they are not the critical answers to having the ultimate competitive advantage. So what is the answer? Well, here it is. The ability to see the entire playing field. There's a saying that the war is won in the tents, not in the trenches. Along with many other training courses and experience that I have from the military, I was a battle staff non-commissioned officer. I went to the battle staff course in El Paso to learn how to accurately track the entire battlefield, to see where the enemy's at, to see where all of our allies are at, to see where all the supplies are at, to see any and all possible routes of entry that the enemy could take and any other routes that any of our allies or our personal forces could either advance or retreat. We were also trained to be able to further predict what the enemy would do, what we could do to counter anything and to advance and be on offense or defense. Because we had to make sure that if we were going to advance to the enemy, we had to ensure that none of our allies or friendly forces were going to be in the way and there would be no blue on blue or fratricide. You know, Wayne Gretzky is famous for saying he didn't go where the puck was. He went to where the puck was going to be. And that's kind of what I'm talking about here. But having the ability to see the entire playing field is 10 times more powerful. And this is exactly what I do with businesses as well. I have the training, the tools, and the resources to be able to see the entire playing field of most business models. 
And that's extremely important because had I known your business, for instance, several months ago or even a year ago, I would have been able to put you in a position to where you would not be affected by the events going on today during the COVID lockdown and other events like this. And listen, I get it. I know that sounds like a bold claim. But before you just say BS and then move on, I invite you to put me to the test. And here's how you can do that. Go to wallycarmichael.com, wallycarmichael.com, then scroll down until you see free training for business owners. Everything you know about marketing your small business is wrong. Get access to that free training. Watch that video. Then get on my calendar and request a business assessment. During this business assessment, you and I will sit down for about 45 minutes and I will walk you through three, maybe four of my top 11 strategies and show you very conservatively just how much money you're leaving on the table by not implementing these simple low cost and sometimes no cost strategies. Once again, go watch the Everything is Wrong video at wallycarmichael.com and then get on my calendar. Now, let's get back to the conversation. So share one to three actionable steps that men of abundance can take today. Oh, wow. Let's see. Well, I like like asking somebody how they're doing or buying somebody coffee behind you and, you know, not – I like that idea of not, uh, not telling them and then, you know, seeing their face. I like that idea. I should probably do it more often. I've done it once in a while, but I think it's a cool thing. Same with like even stopping. And there's a lot of homeless people here in Vancouver. So just going and having a conversation and, and asking them how their day is because a lot of them get walking. People walk by and don't say anything. Right. And they're, they're human beings, you know, and mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes we forget in our lives and including myself, I don't do this every day, but there's sometimes I'm like, you know, I want to, I give give money to them because for whatever reason that one jumps out at me and I want to say hello and um, I think that's powerful you know because when we we get so caught up in going from point A to point B we sort of forget about that and just generally asking how people are you know um, to take interest in people's days people everybody has their own life and their own look at life through different lenses so um, taking that moment to sort of um, just familiarize yourself with people, especially if there's places that you go and you see the same person over and over. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I do too. I absolutely love that, man. Yeah, so it's, I don't know. I mean, I should probably do it more often myself, but those are kind of the things that jumped into my mind that just gives you that sort of, that good feeling that can can, can bring someone's day, you know, and um, that's a good feeling. Yeah. It absolutely is, and it's, it 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 perpetuates it. It you know it's paying it forward, and it keeps moving forward uh, for a certain period of time. And you know, you already talked about one of your rituals, which is your gratitude journal. What other rituals make a big impact in your life? Meditation, one hundred percent, non negotiable. Um, yeah, just med- doing my gratitude journal or journaling itself, just kind of free flowing. And yeah, meditation absolutely has those two things are, are sort of my staples. Obviously, I've, I've implemented, I mean, exercise, obviously, but yoga is huge for me as well. I need to do yoga at some point of the day to kind of because I'm very active. I play, you know, hockey, boxing, weights. I do all this other stuff. And then recently I added in yoga and it's like completely changed everything in my life. It's given me so much balance. So Staying active, but really focusing and being mindful first thing, you know, with meditation and gratitude for sure. And then having some sort of practice where you move your body is absolutely essential. Mm. What kind of meditation do you do? Describe what you do as far as your meditation. So it's evolved. I started out with apps. I started out with Headspace or Calm app. Then I started to kind of listen to different, different kinds on YouTube, really simple but now I, I like silence. I like to sit in silence. I, I put on my I have these Bose headphones that cover the noise, and I just sit and I set my timer and I just breathe for 30 minutes. I've been doing this now for a while, so my body actually craves it. And I just sit and I breathe and I I set my timer. And sometimes it's uncomfortable, and when I get through, it's the best feeling. Sometimes I'll listen to music, depending. Like today, when I woke up, I actually did it in bed. I listened to it some some 
you know, some music because I was just feeling changing it up. This is something that I'll recommend anybody out there is that, again, with meditation, if you want to learn it, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't expect something out of the sky to be like, this is it, it's working. Understand that this every single day compounds into something that you can't put your finger on but you know is working. So if you can do a little bit each day, start with two minutes and that's a win. Check it off as a win. Build that confidence. You can do three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. Before you know it, you got the confidence and your body is used to it and that will allow you to do more time and then eventually try and do 20 minutes. And is it, hard, is it easy to get into that zone? No, it's tough. But just like anything, just like if you go to the gym and do bicep curls, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to do that with your mind too. You're going to have to program it to get, to get through the little bit of uncomfortableness. And, but at the end, everybody that I've talked to goes, wow, I'm so glad I did that. So find some music, find something easy to start, just sit still and then eventually try different things, try different apps, try different people's methods and find what works for you. But most importantly, don't beat yourself up about it. It's not a big deal. You're not going to figure it out exactly the first time, just like anything. So, yeah. 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 And get over the whole mindset that meditation and thanks for sharing that because so many people, I heard somebody say the other day, you know, meditation's out of the question. It's not going to happen. You're never going to catch me cross-legged sitting in the lawn with, with incense. That's, <laughs> there is a form of meditation and that is a type of meditation. I literally just sit wherever I'm at, usually down by the lake or I'm here in my home office in one of my chairs and I'm just sitting here in peace and quiet and just blanking out my mind and letting it just go somewhere else. And I've, I've done other forms of meditation as well. That's why I asked that question because I wanted your perspective. Yeah. Just to show the guys out there that it's not what most people think it is. It's not just what you see some guru on stage or on TV or something like that, with incense and whatnot. But the crazy thing is, is like, is that so unusual? Or is sitting in a car in the middle of traffic and listening? Like, there, there's so many things that we do in our daily lives that – if you look back at just like us as humans for thousands of years ago, sitting in nature, just breathing and sitting with a tree on the grass. Yeah, it may seem weird now when we, we talk about it, but is that that weird connecting like that compared to what we're doing now? Exactly. It's like, it's crazy. We're so conditioned to think that the stuff that we do now is normal. Like it's, it's, it's nuts. So I urge people to sort of, yeah, you don't need to be a guru, but allow yourself to connect. If you can get into nature, if you can just let go and just forget about it, you don't have to be a guru, but it is good to be able to allow yourself the, the opportunity to sit in nature and sort of sit in that position and just breathe, right? But you're right. You don't need to do that. But I encourage people to sometimes to kind of push themselves a little bit. And, and if you have, if you can get into nature and sit there, I would definitely recommend it. Yeah, very, very good point, man. Thanks for sharing that. So what are you reading or listening to that you would recommend to Men of Abundance and why? Um, so the audio book I'm actually listening to right now is – Hold on, I'll, I'll pull it up. Are we okay for time here? Oh, yeah, we're good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, uh, one sec here. I'm just going to pull it up so I can – because I'm going to have this guy on my podcast too. He's awesome. Um, his name is Corey Allen, and it is called – just one second here. Um, it, and it's a mindfulness – it's a mindfulness book as well. Um, it's called Now is the Way by Corey Allen. That's what I'm listening to. I heard him on Aubrey Marcus's podcast. Aubrey Marcus did the forward for it. So I just reached out. And I said, hey, man, I need to get you on the show. He's like, yeah, done. So that's what I'm listening to. I'm still reading uh, Becoming Supernatural by Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe Dispenza. I've been reading it for a while. It's it's tough. It's a tough read sometimes because I really had a focus, but I, I encourage people to follow Dr. Joe Dispenza because he talks about meditation and how the science behind it and how you can measure the brain waves and how you can move energy systems in your body, um, all that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm reading and that's what I'm listening to and they just happen to be about the same thing as mindfulness because for myself, I was very stubborn about mindfulness. I never thought I needed it. I never thought, oh, I don't need this crap, but I needed it more than, than anybody because I was resisting it so much, right? Mm -hmm. So now... It's been a huge thing, and it's these things we resist 
that are actually the things we need. So that's what I found useful and I've been really, really focusing on trying to get better at. Very cool, man. Very cool. We'll have that linked up in the show notes or mentioned anyhow. So what do you feel holds most people back from living a life of true abundance, Lance? Fear. Fear, man. Um, Lack of belief. And I can speak for myself and what I've heard. It's the it's the narratives. It's the stories we tell ourselves that we don't think we're good enough. We compare and then we're scared. We're just scared of the unknown, right? First of all, if we don't believe in ourselves, we're not gonna we're not gonna even start. But then we're also scared, like what if we fail? And I just noticed that, and that all stems back from belief systems that you have as a kid because something happened. And you assume that what you're looking at or what you're experiencing now is going to be the same as that. And it's just not the case. So when you can tell a different narrative in your life and you can change that story and allow yourself to believe, I really believe anything is possible. That's why I love your show. Like abundance is possible for everybody, but it has to start with you. It has to start with you. And what you got to ask yourself, like what, what is holding you back? Like what beliefs are holding you back and why? Is that just something that you're telling yourself or is that something that is actually happened? And usually it's just made up stories and made up stories of the future that we think because they've happened before that they're going to happen again. So that's what I've noticed. Absolutely, man. 100%. (laughs) So what does being a man of abundance mean to you? It just means being abundant in all areas, understanding that each area of your life you 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 can be abundant in. You know, and that's making abundance isn't just about money. It's about relationships. It's about your health. It's about your spiritual. There's so many parts to being human that I believe that now what I love about where the direction of the world is going is that making money, it's not all just about hustle, grind, making money. I love to see the people are, are understanding that the most successful people in the world have been able to tie in more of like a, a spiritual side of abundance in all areas, which creates more abundance in your own life and wealth, right? It's more to it than just making money. So I think we just need to focus on the different areas in our lives that that need attention. And when you're self-aware, when you understand that and you work on those things, then I really think that that um, helps you improve in the other areas as well. So well, that's been 100% my experience. For sure. So, yeah. brother, we are going to close this up, man. Before we do, what did we not talk about? You want to ensure that our abundant leaders get out of our conversation today? And how can we find more of you? Yeah, I, I think we we cover a lot, and this is kind of what I'm what I what I talk about as well is understand that you know abundance starts within it. It starts yourself, and I struggle with this all the time, going back to like limiting beliefs. And you just got to know, you know, what is what is the narrative I'm telling myself? Does it need to change? Well, we got to figure out ways. And I believe that everybody is destined for greatness. It's just a matter of changing that conversation we have with ourselves. And I would suggest right now with with a conversation for to find me, just hit me up on Instagram. You can email me from there. But I would encourage somebody if they want to check out my podcast. That's the best way on Instagram. And then if you want to find out more about what I do for podcast production, just hit me up in, in, in a DM or an email, and I'll, I find that's the best way. Um, websites are currently being redone. I won't bore everybody with the details. So Instagram's best way, Lance W. ECOs, and that's like that for all my social media. Excellent, excellent, man. We'll have that linked up in the show notes, guys. Don't worry about writing it down. It'll be right there. Just click on it, touch it, do whatever you got to do to it <laughs> to be redirected to Lance's Instagram. And uh, make sure you go there, check it out, give him some love, uh, share it out with everybody else, man. Make sure you share this episode too. Be abundant in your actions today and pay it forward. Lance, has been an amazing conversation, man. I greatly appreciate your time. I dig what you're doing. Go out, live your life of abundance, man, and keep paying it forward. I'm digging it. Hey, man, thanks a lot. I really appreciate this conversation. I had a lot of fun. All right, guys, so your action step for today is a little bit different. You know, I know many of you look up to other people, regardless of who that is, and for various reasons, whether they're a sports figure, they're somebody that's in your religion, or there's somebody that's in your community, maybe your parents possibly an author, business owner, all the above, whatever. 
The fact of the matter is, if you ever want to reach that level of greatness, if you ever want to reach that level of success, as long as you keep that person or that group of people on a pedestal, you will never be able to reach that level. But the cool thing is, once you realize that that person is no more of a man or a woman than you are, then you realize that they've just been through journeys and they've done things and they've taken different actions that you have not yet taken. They have connections that you don't yet have. And all you have to do is reach out, make those connections, have those conversations, and you'll quickly realize that you are just as worthy as they are to have that level of wisdom, that level of success or whatever. That's not to say that you can have that level of success overnight simply by taking them off the pedestal. You too have to have some of those adversities as Lance was talking about and as Lance talks about on his podcast, The University of Adversity. Just as we bring up with every episode with the kick in the gut moment, you have to go through and get your bumps, bruises and scrapes and all that good stuff. But here's the other cool thing is mistakes have to be made. But they don't have to be your mistakes. You can learn from others' mistakes, but you still have to go through the gauntlet and make your own mistakes. And you have to put in the work, the sweat, the blood, the tears, and you just have to move through it. The important thing is, amongst many others, is to enjoy the journey. If you don't enjoy the journey, you are never going to stick with it for the long haul. Now, go out, live your life of abundance and make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.